Hey folks, Happy New Year, and with a new year comes new upgrades. Today we're going to soup up this old HP. Some of you may remember this from uh, a video I made years ago, a couple years ago now, when I went down to uh, Southeast Linux Fest. Uh, went to the grid in Charlotte there, and I found this beauty. Uh, a buddy there found, an, I think, the Intel version of this, and I got the AMD version. And I took the AMD version and worked with what I had. I put a bunch of RAM in it. I souped it up. Um, it's a 2010 machine, I think. This machine has an AMD Phenom 2 uh, X4820 in it. 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Um, it came with, I think, like a 4 gig stick in it, so I obviously upgraded that. Um, I stuck a video card in it. Uh, I souped up the wireless. I'll just show you the inside of this thing. I did I did a lot to this, but just to, so you remember what kind of machine this is, it has a single optical drive up there, light scribe drive, has nothing in this bay, has a built-in card reader, which I really like, which does compact flash. So for basically my plan for this thing was to use it as sort of my utility computer, and it has served me very well for that. Uh, but... I I've been finding that I like having a thinner utility computer, which I use an old Micron case for. So what I'm going to do is soup this up to be like an actual legit desktop. And I'm going to move the parts from this machine into the, uh, the Micron case. And I'll show that in this video too. Uh, but the main thing about this computer is going to be the HP. It also has front USB, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's one of those HPs that has... Uh, you know the the upside down chassis. You know the, it's an ATX. It's like designed for a uh, like it's BTX, but it's really a micro ATX. They just put the board upside down. So this is what uh, was originally in it. This oh, it has a Phenom two eight thirty, not an eight twenty. I'm sorry, I was wrong about that. It was. It looked like sort of a mid spec machine at the time. It had six gigs of RAM instead of you know four eight seven fifty gig drive Windows seven. It has built-in graphics, which is why I want to use the board from this machine as for my utility computer, because that ATI Radeon 3000 is more than good enough to display something like uh, like, a, like a Linux uh, live CD or something if I want to shred some disks, or even, um, oh, what's that program I used to use for wiping disks? Um, oh yeah, Boot and Nuke. Um, yeah, Derek's Boot and Nuke. It would display that no problem. So this is sort of, this is the beginning of a Windows 7 era machine. And as you can see, it came with Windows 7 Home Premium. So it came with a decent OS at the time. As you can see, I've upgraded it. I have put a much better power supply in here. Uh, I for, it's an EVGA power supply of some kind. I forget what the wattage is. I think it's a 500 or a 600 or 550, something like that. I put a USB 3 card in here, since it didn't have any USB 3 at all. Uh... What else did I do? I put, I cobbled together a wireless uh, interface to for wireless on the motherboard, which is pretty cool. And I have an RX 460 4 gig card in there. And there's the feature set of the board itself. It has high end audio because it has all the uh, outputs and surround outputs and stuff. It even has a sp spdif down here. Uh, there's your outputs for the onboard video. There's a bunch of USB 2 and there's Ethernet. And of course the uh, outtake fan. So luckily this is an IO shield here and we're gonna take uh, the wireless out. The USB 2 might stay in there. Uh, the wireless is probably gonna go into another machine. Uh, or I'll just take the wireless card out entirely because on a utility computer I'm just not gonna need it. Um, but I'm gonna try to keep most of this the same except for this wireless here. Uh, so We'll see how it goes. So I'll show you the inside of the machine too before I change it. And here's the inside of the machine. There's your graphics card. It's an RX 460. There's your wireless interface that goes onto the wireless card that you can just see down there, just built into this board. I don't know. I'm going to have to come up with another interface uh, for the Micron case because this is full profile and the Micron's low profile, so we'll have to figure that out. The optical drive is SATA, so it will still work with the new board, which is nice. This is a 500 watt EVGA power supply, so now I know. Here's where the drives are. There's a, uh, 
I have a Hyundai SSD down here and a Western Digital on the bottom of that. The Hyundai SSD is going to come out and I'm going to use an M.2 SSD on the uh, on the board. As you can see this has full 16 gigs of RAM in there so this board is 10 years old at this point since it's 2020. This board's 10 years old and it can still take 16 gigs of RAM which is pretty cool so this board still has a lot of light life left in it as far as utility and other things go but as a desktop it definitely could use an upgrade I think. Under here is the uh, the Phenom 2 830, which is still a surprisingly good chip, I have to admit. So, it's an upside down, it's an upside down board. We're going to put another upside down board in it. Um, so, you might be curious as to what I'm going to put in there. Well, let's move over here. Here we have a Ryzen build. So, we're going from Phenom to Ryzen here. And the specs aren't all that different, actually. Um, that's quad core. That's a four core, four thread CPU. This is also a four core, four thread CPU and 16 gigs of RAM for both. Uh, so the specs are remarkably similar, but the performance is going to go up just from doing that. This I I happen to have a uh, a Ryzen 3 1200 line around. So that's what we used in this build. And the nice part about that is that the specs may be sort of similar to the old one, but the performance is going to be better. The RAM is going to be faster, even though it's 2133, some of the slowest DDR4 in the world. But that's it's still going to be a faster performer than this guy here. So this is what I've done. I went, I managed to get some good deals on a board and uh, some RAM. I, uh, I actually managed to get some of this... Uh, GL Evo Potentia RAM, and I put this in a, uh, I put this in another build that I have yet to show you. Uh, it'd probably be part of a computer updates video. I built a, uh, remember the sleeper, that beige case I have? I put an AP, an, an Ryzen APU based build in there, and this faster RAM went in there. So I took the slower RAM out of that and stuck it in this because a 1200 is an old, is an older chip on the Ryzen platform at this point. So it's really not going to matter how fast the RAM is for something that doesn't have an APU in it. It just really doesn't matter. So, I've been using these boards lately, these A320M HDVs by uh, ASRock, and these boards are incredibly stable. Like, clearly the A320 is a, is a very cut-down version of a, you know, a first-gen Ryzen chipset. It can still take up to a third-gen Ryzen, and it can still handle you know, probably 32 gigs of RAM, maybe even 64, I don't know, probably 32, I'd imagine, with only two slots, but uh, the, these boards are very stable. If you just want to build a boring, normal computer, these boards are really good. So between first and third gen Ryzen, uh, these boards have been fantastic. Um, my Windows box is running on one of these boards with a Ryzen 5 1600 in it, so... You know, at least with first gen Ryzen, these are very stable. Not had one issue with these, and hopefully this one is the same. The other one I got sort of used ish on clearance, and this one is brand new, so we'll see what happens. So it's a pretty bare bones board. Uh, you can see the VRM setup is not very complicated. There's only like four, there's, looks like it's either a four phase or a six phase. There's two, there's two up here, so it might be a six phase, it might be a four by two. Uh, VRM design. I'm not really up to snuff on those as far as my knowledge ability, but that's what I think I'm looking at. Uh, I'm sure you'll correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. Uh, the eye on the board's pretty decent. Uh, has PS2, which you can get a split cable for. Uh, some USB up here. Your video outputs. DVI, VGA, HDMI. And of course the HDMI sideways for whatever reason. Uh, you got some USB 3 on there, you got gigabit Ethernet, and you got pretty basic audio. Uh, but the Elna audio on these boards doesn't really have any noise to speak of. The sound is filtered very well out of these, and the DAC is excellent. It's real tech audio, so you know you, you know what you're going to get. <clears throat> it has an M.2 slot, which I've populated with a 128 gig Western Digital Green drive, which is really just a SAN disk SSD, really. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty basic bare-bones motherboard, and that's pretty much what's coming out of this, except that has built-in wireless, which is pretty nice for the time, so I don't know how expensive of a machine this was when it was new, 
but it's getting a pretty basic board put in it. So it, that only makes sense to me in an OEM case like this because essentially what we're building here is a sleeper. Uh, it looks like a boring computer from 10 years ago, and it's going to actually be a boring computer from 2020. So <laughs> that's what we're going to be dealing with. So I'm going to shuffle these parts around, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, I'm mostly through putting the uh, new board in. Uh, I had a few hurdles. Uh, this screw hole down here, there's nothing below it. That screw hole is instead... Stupid cable, get out of my way. Up there. So what I ended up doing is I got a bunch of these uh, old school standoffs that you use for like 486s and AT cases, and I took one of these, I snipped that nub on the end off, and I inserted that through the holes that are still in newer motherboards, like uh, right there. And now the board doesn't flex at all. So sometimes the old school methods really work well. So that made that fit in this case, which is good because I really like this case. It's got a nice drive cage and everything. As you can see, I pulled the SSD out and it's just left with a hard drive that's about as old as the original machine. It's a 2010 Western Digital Caviar Black. Still works. Still works. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Here's what the RX 460 looks like. It's one of the Gigabyte ones. It's a very nice machine. Or a very nice card, rather. Very nice machine. Wow. So this card will go back in there, and we'll get four gigs out of the uh, VRAM on that side. Uh, I'm definitely going to leave the uh, USB card out, because it would just get in the way over there. So... There's six USB on the side, and I've got some USB on the front, so I'm not worried about it. The card reader on the top of this is USB 2, and it only actually uses one one of these cables. It's just a five, it's like a, a, a five connector cable with one of the pins not even punched out. So what I did, what you do for that is uh, on the USB 2 header, you just stick it on the side that doesn't have a ground pin sticking out which in fact goes this way, not the other way. And that those do fit. So the front panel connectors are standard, and they're just in like a USB header style, which I think is a 10-pin. I'm not sure. I think that's a 10-pin. I don't have a PC speaker. I, can't, I used to have a bag full of them, and I can't find them. So this, is, this build's going to have to go without a PC speaker until I get some more, which is really isn't that big of a deal. I just like having the PC speaker there uh, for... Uh, like if the temperature gets high, I like to hear a buzz. So that's just sort of one of those pet those things I like. I don't know if you call that a pet peeve when there isn't a PC speaker, but I, it makes me feel better. <laughs> so 16 gigs of RAM, Ryzen 3 1200, 128 gig SSD, one terabyte hard drive. This machine's probably going to be running Linux as most of my machines do these days. And uh, yeah. There you have it. I'm gonna stick. I just wanted to show you guys what it looked like in this case before I stuck the uh, video card and all the rest of the stuff in. So, yeah, back in a little. Here's what the build looks like with the video card in. It's just kind of a big honking thing there. And one thing I'm not crazy about, as far as this case goes, is that the graphics card fans are basically right up against the power supply. So, the fans could fight each other a little bit, assuming that the uh, how power. I don't know how fast this fan spins. Probably not very fast, considering it's a newer, more efficient power supply, but uh, yeah, the fans could fight each other, but they kind of were anyway before, and uh, if you were to use a graphics card that used a lot more power, that would be an issue, but thankfully this is more of a lower-end card from 2017, so it should be completely fine. Like, for, for this card doesn't really get hot, so it just shouldn't be an issue, so... Now what we're going to do, I'm going to button this thing up and we'll, we will give it a test and make sure it gets into the BIOS. And here's the final product. It looks very much the same as it did before. No real change until you look at the back. The IO shield clearly doesn't match like it used to. It's your generic IO shield. And I've got the... Uh, I just realized I have that stuck in the HDMI port, so i got to fix that crap. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look a whole lot different than it did when I just souped up the old hardware. So, I think I, I simplified this stuff down here, which is good. So, 
Only thing I gotta fix is that thing being stuck in the HDMI port, which really gets on my nerves. So, anyway, I gotta take all this crap out again and fix that. Uh, then we will uh, boot this thing up and just make sure it gets into the BIOS. As far as installing an OS, I'll stick Linux on here and call it a day. Nothing too, nothing too exciting. Uh, but uh, we will show that it gets into the BIOS and detects everything just fine and that it works. So, there you go. Okay, I went and found a TV. So let's see uh, how this thing does. So I'm gonna. This is the first boot. Let's see if. Let's see first if it lets off the magic smoke. Doesn't appear to. Let's do a first boot, shall we? Hey, look at that! I hear activity. Uh, it's trying. Oh, there we go. Hey, it posts. This is another reason I like the PC speaker. Just hit and delete there on this keyboard. And here we go. Ryzen 3 1200, 16 gigs of RAM. The video on this TV is running off of the... Um, RX 460. We have a working board. Let's see if it detects the drive. Yep. There's the 120 gig SSD. There's the two, one terabyte hard drive and the HP DVD ROM drive. Let's make sure that still works while we're here. I haven't used it in a while. Yay! Works fine. So that's cool. So there we go, I believe we have a successful build. There's the motherboard temperatures and all that stuff. Running very well. Power supply voltages look like they're in check. Yeah, there you go. We have a successful build. So that's excellent. So now I have a more modern looking sleeper build, basically. I really like these sleeper builds. They're a lot of fun, because they look like nothing special, but then you open the cover and then there's a lot, lot of stuff that's special that's going on. So, I, I think that's a lot of fun, so I figured I'd share it with you. I, I haven't really been filming computer builds in a while, just because a lot of them aren't that exciting, and I, I, I just don't feel the need to document every single thing I do with a computer anymore. Yeah, so there you have it. Um, now, here begs the question, what's this computer going to be used for? Um, it's a more capable sleeper build. The other sleeper build that I have is based around a Ryzen APU. Well, you're going to see that uh, in a computer updates video that I'm long overdue to do. I've done a lot you know, in the past while, so we're going to do another video like that at some point, and you'll see that. This is a more capable one. It has more VRAM. Uh, the RX 460 is a big step up from, uh, you know, the other thing. Uh, it's it's very capable desktop, essentially. Uh, you could play Forza Horizon 3 or 4 on a system like this without much of an issue. Uh, so, you know, it's a fairly capable machine, has the 16 gigs of RAM that you need, has a very good upgrade path all the way up to 3rd gen Ryzen, which is really nice. So, if I wanted, I could upgrade this to a 3200G or a 3400G and take the graphics card away. And I'd have another of sort of a similar sleeper build that I already have in the other machine. So that's always a possibility for the future when those chips get very cheap. Yeah, so uh, there you go. This HP Pavilion is now rising to the top. Hway, hway, hway. Anyway, um, there you have it. That's the little sleeper build is HP. I thought you guys might find it fun. And... Uh, yeah, not much else to say, I suppose. If you'd like to follow me on social media, I have links for that down below. If you'd like to join our Discord uh, chat, link for that's down below as well. And as always, have a good one, everybody. Ciao.